I think that's it. I think that's like the pinnacle of carbohydrate, salt and dairy. Right there. That rivals even like a roast potato with butter. <laughs> Hi, it's time for the fanciest unfancy meal ever. We're doing grilled cheese sandwiches, or in Australia, what we call toasted cheese sandwiches. Is that what we call them here? Yes. That's what you call them. That's what I call them. Toasted cheese sandwiches, everybody loves them. They are a midweek savior in our family, and we have spent a lot of time perfecting what we believe is the perfect cheese toasty. Guided ably, I might say, by the movie Chef, which has a cult following for its ultimate grilled cheese sandwich section. I know so many people that have tried to replicate this grilled cheese sandwich. Is that what inspired us? Oh, heavily. Heavily, heavily. All right, let's get into it. So the first thing we know about grilled cheese sandwiches is you can't get fancy bread. Don't get fancy on the bread, don't bother. It is merely the structure that holds the cheese. And if you spend too much energy on too much bread, you miss out on the cheese factor. Is that a fair summation? Yeah. I think it's a pretty good way of describing it. I like to do mine in a sandwich press. You can do it in a jaffle maker, but we've got this. It does more all at once. And ultimately this is about more, 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 more. Yep, yeah, that's it. That's all I'm gonna say there. We have today just our bog standard white bread from a packet because, you know, that's what most of us have in the house, yeah? And the first and most important step of this is to butter the outside of your bread. Sounds weird, I know, you usually butter the inside. But you need to butter what is ultimately going to be the outside of the bread because that's what helps it go crispy, crunchy. And we want a bit of crisp factor. I like crisp. It'll always be more crisp in my life. I'd like to point out this extraordinary tool that I have here, our butter spatula, our butter spreader. It is a essential tool in our house. Is essential the right word? What would you do without the butter spreader? Helpful tool. It's a helpful tool. Would you sit in the corner and cry if I took it away from you forever? Ooh, I wouldn't use butter. <laughs> if the butter spreader's gone, there is no more butter. So I've got a nice Healthy spread of butter on the outside. Healthy is probably the wrong word. This is not a weight loss meal, but I don't believe in weight loss meals. And if you know anything about me by now, it would be that I don't believe in weight loss meals. I'm just going to start by making one and then I'll move on to making another. Or should I go for two straight up? Two straight up. Two straight up. Ooh. There we go. Two straight up. So we're going to do that. Pop them there. Now, the next most important step is you have to have a minimum of three kinds of cheese. We've been known to go for four. That can work. What doesn't work is two kinds of cheese. You absolutely need three kinds of cheese. And what are they? Can you remember off the top of your head why we choose them? Doesn't matter if you can't, I'm quite happy to tell you. Salty. Do you want me to butter the inside? No. <laughs> no. So we need a salty cheese or a sharp cheese. And for that layer, I'm going with Australian Parmesan. It's nice and bitey. It's also a relatively solid cheese. So it's gonna be our bottom layer of cheese here. Good Australian Parmesan, but any kind of like really strong bitey cheese that you like. This is the kind of Parmesan you can just eat on your own though, yeah? Yeah, it's soft. It's, it's not the hardest Parmesan I've come across. It's just a good solid cheese with a nice it will bite. Melt. Hmm? It'll melt. It'll melt, but it's also a little bit more solid than some of the other cheese we're using. Stop contradicting me! <laughs> <laughs> How dare you have an opinion? Actually, you've probably got the bigger opinion on this particular area. Our middle layer is going to be a Gilesburg, which is a nice, soft, sweet cheese. It has a little bit of sweetness to it. Oh, you didn't ask me about that one. No, I didn't have to ask you about that one. I know exactly what that one is. You say you don't have a sweet palate, but I know this is one of your favourite cheeses. All right, can I get any more in there without overkill? It's a weight loss <laughs> cheese. Why? Because it's got holes in it, it's missing bits? Yeah. Was that your joke? Did I just steal your joke? It's a low calorie cheese. It's so not. It's still exactly the same and delicious and gorgeous. And then our top layer is going to be a New Zealand tasty. So again, this one is, this is, an, this is a softer tasty than I would usually get, but I quite like it because it's got a creaminess to it that works really well with our sweet cheese and our bitey cheese. So what you're looking for in the three cheese combination, you can put whatever three cheeses you want on, but they should complement one another and they should be varied. There's no point in putting a whole lot of cheddars on unless they are, you know, distinctly different kind of cheddars. 
or unless you're a cheddar person, and I forgive you if you are, because frankly, cheddar. Um, the only thing I would say is be careful if you're using like a gorgonzola or a really soft uh, camembert or blue, those cheeses tend to melt away. We've tried it. Save your energy and go for cheeses that will melt nicely without actually just like completely running off the bread altogether. So there you go, those are our three cheeses. Next step is to butter again. So I want that one to go on there, which means I need to butter that bit and I want that one to go on there. So I need to butter that bit, right here. Uh, here we go, we'll just butter what is the outside again. I like this, I can take my time. It's one of those meals that, even when you're taking your time, is still super quick. Do you reckon this would be good with like a fried egg on the side? No. No. <laughs> well, that was a strong opinion to have. Um, all right, butter on the outside again. Seems counterintuitive, I know, but trust me, it's not. Now I'm gonna close it. Do I have your permission to close, sir? Close. Close. All right, now we're just gonna close that. And we're gonna let it brown up a little bit on the outside. Oh, if you could smell that butter. <gasps> it's toasty, it's buttery. I'm waiting for the cheesy, but the cheese has gotta melt first, yeah? Do you know what I love about a toasted cheese sandwich? Cheese. Well, other than the cheese, and the bread, and the butter. The it's a shush, shushy. It is a meal for any time of the day. You can have a toasted cheese sandwich for breakfast. You can have it for lunch. You can have it for dinner. You can have it for midnight snacks. You can have it for elevensies. You can have it for afternoon tea. You can have it for supper. Did I miss any? Um, High tea. Little tea. cheese fingers, fingers, cheesy fingers. And I don't know. Like I really don't know anyone that ultimately hates a toasted cheese sandwich. There's like, there's always a version that you will like. All right, how do you take it, personalize it, do whatever you wanna to do to it? I'm quite a fan of adding a bit of green pickle relish to mine. Or mustard. You're shaking your head. Tell me what's going on over there. Was that a no? You're a purist. Absolutely. Cheese purist over there. But I get it. You get it, ooh. No, I get it, you're allowed to do what you... It's about personalization, right? Yeah. This is, this is the building blocks, the basic building blocks for you to go on and do whatever you like. Having said that, nothing as comforting as just a straight up cheese toasty. I don't think you can stuff up three cheese. You can, we did, remember? It's a wrong cheese. I don't if you know got the, it was stuffing that up. It wasn't up. stuffed up, it just wasn't as cheesy as we wanted it to be. <laughs> But is that ever, like, is there an, an end point where you're like, that's it? Or are you constantly, like, like with, say, cheeseburgers, for example, that we do, are we, we're just forever going to be searching for the ultimate cheese toasty? Yes. You never find it because then the search is over and the search is all part of it. Am I right? All right, let's have a look. Ooh. Now, this is the integral moment. What I'm going to do here is, like I said, this is not... This is not about calorie counting, people. This is about pure comfort. So, on with a little more butter. She says a little more as it pulls in the crevices. All right. The other thing uh, you rightly pointed out before, which I have forgotten to mention, is you, you want um, bread that can take a little bit of a, that's got a bit of heft to it so that you can give it a little bit of a squeeze if you need to. Yep. Yep. So here we go, ready for the flip. Ooh, look at that, it's getting so crunchy, which is what you want. Oh, yes. I'm gonna do this because I wanna squash the other end of the sandwich. This is another reason that I like the grill. It's because you can move it around. If it's um, in a toast, if it's in a jaffle iron, you can't do that. It's all locked in place, locked in. All right. This is the sandwich when, that you make when you need a cuddle in the form of food. Oh, hiss, 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 hiss. This is the finishing step now. 
the finishing step. Just imagine this on a on a rainy night in the middle of winter and you've got your warm woolly socks on and your feet in front of, I'd like to say the fire, but in our place it's just the heater. Your, your toes propped up in front of the heater. You're ready, you're ready to just like snuggle down with a good movie. Yeah. Oh, do you hear that? Do you hear that the cheese, the cheese has escaped its borders? That's the sign of a good cheese toasty when it's oozing out but not disappearing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do I dare? Can I wait any longer? What you need also is a good knife for cutting. You don't want to be doing this with a bread knife. You need, you want to get the, the good, the good cut. You don't want to squeeze too much out. Let's have a look at, <gasps> look at that. I'm going to give it a tiny bit longer. No, I'm not. That's overkill. <gasps> oh my lordy lordy. Here we go. Are you ready? Oh, look at that. Ooey. <laughs> That is a pretty good looking toasted cheese sandwich. Yep. Or grilled cheese, How, whatever you want to call it. You ready? I'm gonna do the big. It's a, it's a controversial question. Am I going across to maintain structure? I'm going yes. triangles. Yes. Oh, I was just about to go down the middle. That could have been a disaster. Here we go, ready? Oh yes, look at that. Oh yeah, get rid of that knife, we don't need to see that. What you need to see is that. Look at that ratio of cheese in there. That ratio of cheese, that is burning hot I might add. <laughs> and I'll probably burn my mouth trying to eat it in just a second. When we were kids we used to sit um, Friday night in front of a movie. Tomato soup, grilled cheese sandwiches. Oh, that is the Friday night dinner of kings and very hungry school children. Ready? Ready for me to burn my mouth? Because you can't not taste it, right? Here we go, here we go, here we go. Here we go. Call the um, first aid people right about now. Oh. Mm. Buttery, creamy, salty, cheesy. I think that's it. I think that's like the pinnacle of carbohydrate, salt and dairy. Right there. That rivals even like a roast potato with butter. Oh, simple pleasures. That's it. That's how you make. Mm, I'm dribbling. The perfect toasted cheese sandwich or grilled cheese sandwich. Thank you so much for joining me. This is the midweek dinner of kings. I dare you to try it. And try your own little tricks, but definitely butter the outside and definitely go with three kinds of cheese, yeah? That is the joyful food if ever I saw it. So thank you very much for joining me and I will see you next.